Hello, and welcome to SOE TV. That's School of Education TV. I'm your host, Dawn Krim, the Associate Dean for External Relations, and we have a special show for you. Today, I am joined by Dean Julie Underwood, the Dean of the number one public school of education. So the rankings say, and so we experience. So she's been Dean for 10 years, and she is going to be going back to faculty at the end of the summer. So Dean Underwood, welcome. Thank you. So, wow, 10 years. 10 years. Tell us a little bit about that. What's this 10 years been like for you? Wow, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> 10 years, it's really hard to believe that it has been 10 years. Um, it's been a whirlwind and we've seen lots of changes and when I think back um, of all of the things that have happened over 10 years, it seems like it's been a long time. But in another way, it seems like it's gone by in a minute. Well, we are a unique school of education. When people think about education, they think to traditional, you know, bricks and mortars, principals, teachers. But our school of education also encompasses health um, departments as well as the arts. So what's it been like leading a school that has those three components? And talk a little bit about those three components. Well, lots of schools of education are made up of different pieces, uh, but much more traditionally they're made up of human development, like some of the SOHI things, and then, you know, a lot of the kinesiology pieces too. We are unusual, except for maybe NYU, that has the arts, we have the arts uh, as part of the School of Education. And um, since I started out as a faculty member here, it's what I knew. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's no surprise that we have this very complex organization. Um, and we've got the arts and we've got kinesiology or the health related activities and then the traditional education pieces. The arts, um, you, you can actually think about the arts as, uh, you know, as part of or a kind of a, a division within the School of Education. Art, dance, theater, and tandem press. and. Um, they've been a joy to work with. It brings such depth um, and breadth to the School of Education uh, because what makes your soul f sing other than the arts? Uh, so it's really been wonderful to work with them. So when you think about um, the arts, did you have art in your background? Did you have experience in art education? Or um, how did you come to uh, embrace and make it feel seamless to have the arts as part of the School of Education? Well, you know, historically they come from education, mm -hmm. art education, dance as part of um, physical education. And personally, I personally just enjoy the arts. Um, and, you know, that that's just per a personal interest. Okay. Um, and how it fits into the rest of, of the School of Education is people thinking about it as, uh, as part of growth, um, as an important part of uh, who we are as a community. And, and that's the way it, it fits in there. Okay. So thinking about those same lines around health. So you said kinesiology sometimes are in schools of education. Talk about how kinesiology also fits within our portfolio. Well, kinesiology, just like the art department started our, as art education, you know, kinesiology started as physical education, uh, and then was physical education for men and physical education mm -hmm. for women, and dance came out of, out of physical education for women. So historically, it makes sense, and it has just never changed within our school of education. And I think about um, uh, actually improving health and how do you improve health other than helping people understand how to improve their own health and how to um, be stronger um, and a well-rounded person. So we do think about education as part of health. We also um, don't just have our health related programs in kinesiology mm -hmm. because counseling psych is part of it's health related in many ways. Correct. And of course um, Rehab psych mm -hmm. is health related in many ways. So as you think, if you think about our health related programs, it's not just kinesiology with occupational therapy um, and and their um, athletic training kind of programs, but it's also rehab psych and, and counseling psych too. Wow. Well, you you mentioned that you 
although our dean right now, you also were a faculty member in the education administration program here in the School of Ed. Talk a little bit more about um, your background that prepared you to come to the UW-Madison campus, other positions or uh, expertise that you brought. Well, I'll do the quick rundown. Um, you know, I, I, I actually was a faculty member at the University of North Dakota wow. um, before I was a faculty member here. Uh, it was before I finished my dissertation, and I was hired through the law school to be a faculty member at the T Center for Teaching and Learning oh, okay. at the University of North Dakota. And then I came here as a faculty member, as an assistant professor in what was then educational administration, now educational leadership and policy analysis. Um, and was tenured as a faculty member there. Mm -hmm. um, I was department chair there, and I worked with the La Follette Center oh. um, in thinking about education policy and education law. I had a joint appointment in the law school. Wow. Um, and then I was um, general counsel for the National School Boards Association immediately becoming, before becoming dean. Wow. Um, so I was, um, I, I like to say I, I was, uh, I had the, a dream job for a school attorney because I have Supreme Court practice and I never had to bill a client. <laughs> wow, so you had a chance to testify in front of the Supreme Court, I've heard. I had a chance to argue cases in front of the United States Supreme Court and filed many briefs in front of the United States Supreme Court and many briefs in lots of uh, courts of appeals. So when you think about um, that period of your work, because it's around education policy, what can you share maybe some of the policy decisions that maybe occurred then that you're seeing play out now and how what things should we be doing around education policy to, to keep education strong well i think about it as in as in terms of public schools mm -hmm. anytime you pass a law or write a regulation or a court makes a decision about um, an education policy that impacts impacts education policy. Any court okay. decision that impacts schools is in education policy. Um, so things like um, civil rights issues, employment issues, constitutional issues, um, discrimination issues, wow. um, all of those are really education policy. School finance um, certainly is, is public school policy. And all of those are really implemented through either the legislature um, an administrative regulation from a department of it, a department of education or a department of public instruction, okay. or from case law. Wow, so a lot of education and law mixture in your background. So I understand that you actually come from an education family. Maybe share a little bit about the grounding in education that you've had. I do. I, I say that we're. <laughs> That I am. I come from an education family. It's a, I have a long history of educators in my family. Um, you know, my both of my grandfathers were school board members, wow. um, and my uh, father was a school superintendent. And um, then he he was a university professor after he retired as a school superintendent. My mother was um, an assistant superintendent for special ed education. My sister is currently a superintendent <laughs> in um, in Wisconsin. Um, and now my daughter um, is a special ed teacher, and my younger daughter is going to uh, graduate school to be a school psychologist. Wow. <laughs> you know, in our family, you can't go very far from public schools. It's the conversation that was always at my dinner table when I was a kid. Wow. So knowing all that and thinking about your 10 years as a dean here in the School of Education, what would you say are some of the highlights over those 10 years? Wow, how much time do we have? <laughs> we could think There's about probably this. a few that you have right on the tip of your tongue. Oh man, it, it would be hard to make a list because we've um, done so many different things. You know, if you think about our academic programs, nearly all of our academic programs have um, been renovated um, or restructured mm -hmm. in the last 10 years. Um, we've, um, we've really taken a different tack to the arts as we went through the entire conversation about a college, college of the arts and the Arts Institute had been within the School of Education and now it's separate and, and has, its, has its own legs. Um, we've increased our fundraising, as you well know. I do know. Um, we've, we've really kicked up our philanthropy quite a bit and, and as part of that we've kicked up our, um, our connection to our alumni. 
which really has built strength, not just fundraising, mm -hmm. but it has really built strength within the School of Education. We've increased our, fund, uh, our funds and our expenditures in terms of, of research. Mm -hmm. um, the, Wisconsin, uh, the, Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Center for Educational Research is doing wonderfully well. Mm -hmm. um, they were diversified quite a bit, and, and WIDA became part of um, WCER. That's doing wonderfully. We also created a nonprofit organization, Wisconsin mm -hmm. Center for Education Products and Services, and that, um, that's intended to, um, to support and commercialize, protect and commercialize uh, intellectual property that's not patentable and in the education realm. So what does that mean? If I'm your neighbor, we're at Starbucks, and you're telling me about this new nonprofit that you started, what does it do? So it takes things that we've created within campus um, that may be of, of need or importance to educators, and it, it makes them into products oh, okay. or puts them in a way that, that, that educators can buy them and use them. Okay. Whether it's a test um, or a service, um, it, it actually gives, gives educators an opportunity to really use our research on a hands-on kind of way. Wow, so research to practice. So we might be able to see some of those products in years to come in school districts or around the country. We already do see some of them. Oh. So the, the WIDA test uh, assessment for English language learners, ah. um, we've got that commercialized out into schools all across the United States and across the world nowadays. Wow, so that's quite a reach for uh, UW-Madison School of Ed. So when you think about our, our educational impact, it really does embody the Wisconsin idea. It's not just local or statewide, it's worldwide. It is global. You know, the modern, the modern Wisconsin idea, you have to think about um, the University of Wisconsin having a global reach because that's the world we live in. I've, I've heard it said over your 10 years as the, the dean of the School of Ed that you really understand shared governance. You really understand the role that faculty members play, the contribution that staff make, and the commitment and dedication that our students have to their careers and what they're going to do um, going forward. How has that been for you as a leader, bringing those three together and having you know, the number one public school of education? What, what role did that play? Shared governance is you know, part of who I am. Um, you know, I believe in distributed leadership. I believe that uh, 10,000 views are better than one view. Um, if you get lots of heads together, you're going to come out with a better result. So I do think about um, faculty, staff, uh, and students, and alumni mm -hmm. coming in and helping us make decisions. So it's, it's a very natural thing for me. We started a um, student advisory board even, okay. so that moved forward. I think our, um, our Academic Planning Council has become stronger in terms of understanding the entire school and participating in the entire school's decision making. It really is what, um, it's a hallmark of the University of Wisconsin for good reason. It's not, you know, I, participatory govern, governance isn't a spectator sport. Okay. Everybody's got to be engaged and, and um, it, it, it moves forward in a way that's better for everybody. Thank you for sharing that. When you think about the state of education, not in Wisconsin, but just where we find ourselves as citizens, when we, when we um, think about our schools, when we think about some of the, the good things and bad things that are happening in schools around the country, um, what role do you see this school of education playing and help helping to improve education for students? You have to think about it on a couple of different fronts. Um, one is nationally and globally, um, thinking about the important research that we do here, because we do yep. a lot of important research. We do. Uh, you know, WCER is the oldest and largest education research 50 center. 50 years this year. 50 years, yeah, uh, in, in the United States. And the research that, that we do there is really important across the nation and around the world. Um, so we focus on improving results for children. 
uh, whether that's in a classroom level or actually at a district, dist, district uh, or state level. We think about improving learning for, for all children. And then at the local level, we have an important role to play um, as we work with our partner schools, as we work with school districts in Dane County, and um, most significantly, as we work with the Madison Metropolitan School District, we have a Project Forward Madison mm -hmm. um, that's a strong partnership um, with the Madison School District. And we, we hope to continue to work with districts to close the achievement gap, um, to close opportunity gaps, um, and to make sure that we improve learning for all learners. Well, thank you for sharing that. During during this past year, you've and actually over your career, you've had several leadership positions in education, statewide and nationally. Um, what do you see as the impact of um, deans of education and educational leaders coming together to improve education? How how can we extend uh, the work we're doing to improve again s schools for students? Well. You can't just use the dean's position as a bully pulpit. Okay. You certainly can use it in some ways um, to help people focus on important issues for education, like the opportunity gap. So in one way, you can, you can actually make people aware of those issues. But you can't just use it in that way. You actually have to help people get in um, into partnerships, roll up your sleeves, and work together to improve classroom practices, to include district practices, to improve state practices, um, looking for evidence-based policies okay. um, to improve student learning. And, but you actually have to get in there and work with people. You can't just talk about it. Okay. That's important information. Good advice. Well, it's, it's an important distinction. Yeah, you're you know, right. You can't, just, you can't just do the research and you can't just talk about it. You have to work with people who are actually in schools. Um, to help to help improve learning for all children. Okay. Well, thinking about working with people in schools, um, the School of Education has about 45,000 alumni around the world who are, you know, some have stayed in education, some have moved to other areas. How, how can we, as a school event, work more with those alumni around some of these education issues? Well, I should ask you that question, John. <laughs> well, as dean, I, I think people sometimes think about the traditional role of um, governing the school, leading the school, but they sometimes don't think about the connections that the school makes with alumni and what's important about um, how our alumni have been prepared. But prepared to do what and how can we work together? So if you can talk about that from your vantage point. Well. You have to remember that you know we don't we're not just education, so we're education, yep. arts, and health. Yep. Um, and people don't always stay in the in the area that they're originally trained. Mm -hmm. So you have people who have a breadth of experience, and that helps. That absolutely helps. Um, helps us. Um, helps us network our 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 students mm -hmm. and our other our young alumni to our established alumni. Um, it helps us connect our programs into different places um, around the world, not just, not just in the state or na nationally, but around the world. So we have strong connections um, because we stay in touch with our alumni. Mm -hmm. And then it helps us get different perspectives, like some of our alumni are in corporations mm -hmm. or are journalists. And it helps us um, get different perspectives on what we should be doing um, what our students should be doing and and what kind of work we should move towards. So it, it's really, um, it is staying connected and building networks. Well, well thanks for sharing that. When I think about um, your, your time as Dean kind of coming to a close, um, of course the school of ed will continue. You'll be going back to now the education leadership and policy analysis um, department. What hopes do you have for the School of Education going forward? Well, I hope that we stay as strong as we have been. That is kind of, you know, a building on, on top of, you know, it's a ladder effect. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I believe that we continue to build on our excellence and I, I hope we stay in that level of, 
of, of incredibly wonderful students, faculty, staff, and programs to be the great school of education that we are. Um, I hope and expect that we continue to have a strong culture um, because we do, it's, that's one of the assets that we have in the School of Education that many people don't talk about. We have a great culture within the School of Education of shared governance, mm -hmm. um, of excellence, um, of respect for one another, um, and, and shared values. And to me, that's the heart of everything that we do because, you know, that's, that's our community building, building together to improve, improve the lives of others. Um, and I think that that's the path that we've, we've been on and that we will continue to be on. Thank you for sharing those hopes because, you know, when you, when you just think about um, the possibilities and the Wisconsin idea and all that we've been doing, the continuation of success and excellence is, is very important. So our time is getting short. I want to ask you a series of questions. So I'll, I'll throw out a statement and just share the first thing that comes to mind. Is this kind of okay. like Family Feud? Are yeah. you going to put up what other people have answered? Yep. So ding! <laughs> so Red Doors. Oh, Bascom Hill School of Education. John and Tasha Mordridge. Fairy, fairy godmother, fairy godfather. <laughs> uh, education research. WCER. Technology in education. Uh, need to integrate. Okay, need to integrate, I like that. Wisconsin idea. Everything. Faculty. Um, um, the heart of the School of Education. Staff. Getting everything done. <laughs> Students. Excellence. Leadership in education. Hard work. All right, thank you. Just wanted to kind of see where your, where your thoughts were around some of the things that we hold near and dear to our hearts. Did I get 100 points? <laughs> you, got, you got them all right. <laughs> so one, one, fun, one fun fact that uh, we've learned over the years that you've been on campus is you had to have a signature in your red cowboy boots. <laughs> How did that come to be? There's a lot of photos that I've seen of you and have been at events with you where you had all your red cowboy boots. What's that about? Well, um, you know, I graduated from high school in Fargo, North Dakota. <laughs> so wearing cowboy boots was a natural thing. You know, they're incredibly comfortable. <laughs> they're great. And um, the, as soon as I got back here as dean, I um, saw these red cowboy boots. And I thought, wow, those are fantastic. So I started wearing them to football games and have just been compelled to wear them a lot. I love them. <laughs> well, I got to say, your influence has rubbed off on me. I am from Philadelphia. I've been here for 19 years. And last summer, I bought red cowboy boots. <laughs> Great. So they are great and they They're are great. comfortable. So, and when you're at a red school, why not? Well, Julie, thank you. And on behalf of our faculty, our staff, our students, and our alumni, thank you for the 10 years that you've served as dean, for the years that you've been on campus and at leadership. Thank you for staying with us and continuing your public school advocacy at ed leadership, because it's really been a pleasure for me, my staff, and others to work with you work under your leadership, and to be a part of your service. So thank you no, on thank behalf you. of the school and for being here with me today. Thank you, Don. I appreciate it. You are very welcome. Thank and thank you to our video producers and you, the viewers, for tuning in for another episode of SOE TV, that School of Education TV. Take care. <laughs>